Just a minute, Mildred. My name is John Harrington. I'm 30 years old. I am a paranoic. <laughs> paranoic. An enchanting word. So civilized and full of possibilities. The fact is, I am completely mad. The realization of which annoyed me at first, but is now amusing to me. Quite amusing. Nobody suspects that I am a madman, a dangerous murderer. Not Mildred, my wife, nor the employees of my fashion center, nor, of course, my customers. Poor little fly. Why are you so daring? You're so fragile, and yet you're born you reproduce yourself and you die like men. The difference is that you don't think and you don't need to remember. You don't fear death because you ignore it. Your insignificant life is a mere biological accident. But death exists, I can assure you. And that is what makes life a ridiculous and brief drama. But the fact remains that I have killed five young women, three of whom are buried in the hothouse. Carol, Mary, Margaret. They were the friendliest, the most attractive ones. There is one problem. I must go on wielding the cleaver. It's most annoying. But when I begin to hear those footsteps, those stealthy footsteps. I know I must kill. And I shall have to continue killing until I find out the whole truth. That's it. Until I find out the whole truth. sleep well last night? You know I never sleep well. It's pointless to ask me the same question every day. How sad another bride killed. Sad. But fortunately, <laughs> she paid for her wedding dress in advance. Have you made any decisions about what we spoke of yesterday? I'll never give you a divorce. Never. We shall stay married until death do us part. That's a vague answer. They didn't suspect that death was going to part them so soon. They're in my power, John. The banks, the uh, wholesalers. Everything works thanks to my money. None of this would exist 
if it weren't for little old me. Yes, but don't forget. I inherited the house and the fashion business from my mother. A mountain of ruins buried in debt. That's all it was, and you know it. That's when I had the misfortune of finding a completely useless husband. I have records right down to the last penny I've invested. Stop that! Better listen to me carefully, John Harrington. I will never give you a divorce. Never. Do you understand? Never. As you wish, Mildred. I won't insist. John! Dr. Calloway has invited me to a seance tonight. I want you to come with me. Are you trying to communicate with your first husband? <laughs> if he was really as intelligent as you say he was, I don't think you'll be able to manage it. At least while he was alive, he was a man. But you, how easily one is deceived by appearances. I could compete with your deceased husband easily, if it was worth the trouble. Take a look at these sketches. Another time. Who are you? Hello, my name is Helen Wood. I'm a professional model. I heard you had a vacancy. How'd you find out? Oh, a friend of Rosie's told me. Rosie? She worked for a year here. Left us without warning a couple of weeks ago. Have you worked before? Here are my references. Your last job was at Regents. Why did you leave there? For personal reasons. Mm -hmm. Height, 5'7". Weight, 122. 37, 22, 37. You're half an inch out. My waist is 21 and a half inches. Have you ever modeled wedding dresses? Oh, a few times. Well, here you'll have to do it constantly. And pajamas, lingerie. We specialize in everything a bride might use on her wedding day. Including the bridegroom. You seem to be very intelligent and rather witty. I think I am. I can offer you a month's trial at 500 francs a week. And we have to have an exclusive. Taxes and insurance are both included. I'll take it. You'll report to Miss Louise. All right. She'll show you the routine. Welcome to Harrington and Company. I hope you'll enjoy working with us. I hope so.
we are congregated here with our remorse, our hates, our loves, our unspeakable desires. And I summon ye, the ones who can still feel pity for those of us alive here. I begin to perceive some kind of message with increasing intensity. This room is being filled with pity, with forgiveness, with compassion. Who are you? Whom do you seek? <laughs> oh, John, behave yourself. Leave me alone. Don't be naughty. I love you, John. John? I love you, my baby! <laughs> ah! Good morning, Mr. Harrington. Good morning, Inspector Russell. Do you want to ask me some more questions? I'll do anything I can to help you. Only I'm afraid I've told you all I know. Just passing this way, I thought I'd drop in and pay my respects. This place fascinates me. Mm -hmm. It's only a hothouse. I'm attracted to everything that is an alteration of nature like the brain of a mental patient. Even that must be something like your hothouse. Don't you agree? A curious analogy, Inspector. Hmm. An impressive atmosphere. Flowers that are strange. And the birds of crime fluttering about in his brain. A special hybrid. Heat. And watering. And the right fertilizer. We've drawn a blank regarding those murders. In less than a year, there were three women killed. And on their wedding night. Not to mention the four missing. Maybe their husbands weren't too keen about marriage. Oh, I can accept any crime if... I can understand the human impulse that motivated it. When you're dealing with a demented mind... Well, why do you say that? Is there another possibility? A madman can also have good reasons. For him. But I'm sure in the dark. That's the advantage the criminal has. He operates without logic, you see. Who knows who his next victim will be? More than 200 couples. Get married in Paris every day. The leaves you burn here, huh? Yes, only leaves. Have you had any word from Rosie Miller? No, she left without notice. Look at these lovely flowers, Inspector Russell. They're beautiful, aren't they? Hmm. Yeah. Rosie was also quite beautiful. But, Inspector, she wasn't planning to get married. At least she wasn't just before she left. I 
think I've mentioned before that girls who work in fashion are beautiful and ambitious. Husbands sometimes buy the garments for their wives and use the models for themselves, if you understand. Thanks. That's it. Now get the same photographs in color. Yeah, okay. That's it. Do you think Rosie is taking a secret vacation? Why not? Beautiful. Yeah. Miss Wood. Hmm? Excuse me. This is Helen Wood. She filled the vacancy left by Rosie's departure. Inspector Russell, I'd like to introduce you to Miss Helen Wood. It's a pleasure, Miss Wood. There ought to be a law against pretty models going away without leaving a forwarding address. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Miss Wood. I'll have to leave you. Husbands of your clients are very fortunate men indeed. Oh, uh, I, I may have to trouble you again. Just routine, is that right, Inspector? Simply routine. Oh, Inspector, don't worry about those girls. I'm sure you'll find them. I wanted to notify you that I'm going to have to quit working for you. Why? Because I'm getting married. I want you to stay after the other girls leave tonight. Here you see all the dresses created by the House of Harrington since my mother founded the organization in 1927. I adored my mother, and I decided to carry on her work. You're so young. 
and so lovely. Choose whatever dress you like. It will be my wedding gift. Go ahead, choose one. This is the prettiest, isn't it? Put it on. Now? Yes. Now. I want to see you in your wedding dress. As if tonight really belonged to us. inside my brain. Who? Why do I hear those footsteps? to another woman. And I'll find out a little bit more. Why that woman keeps calling my name. Why there's so much pain in her eyes. And I'll see her features more clearly. Each time more clearly. John. John.
smell something burning? John, what do you find so interesting in the newspaper that you forgot the toast? Don't do that, Mildred. You know it bothers me. I was only trying to make your toast edible. Did I tell you I received a letter from my cousin Gladys? No. Aren't you going to ask me what she said in it? You're going to tell me anyway. She's not feeling well, and she asked me to pay her a visit. To keep her company. So, if you have no objections, I'll go tomorrow. I have no objections. Of course you have no objection. For a whole week, you can pretend you're divorced. But I promise you, I will come back, my dear. <laughs> you can be certain of that. Hello, Mr. Harrington. Hello. What are you doing here? What do you think I'm doing? I could tell you I knew your wife was going away, and I've come because I wanted to be alone with you. I might be a model whose sole purpose is to capture her boss. Or Rosie Miller's sister, for example, who wants to ask you, what did you do with my sister, Mr. Harrington? As a matter of fact, I... I killed her, raped her, and buried her in the hothouse. <laughs> Must have been marvelous. What motive would you prefer to have brought me here? The real one. That'll be the most interesting. Are you really Rosie's sister? Would it matter to you if I were? No. How often have you been unfaithful to your wife? Three, four times? You ask a lot of questions. That's the only way that you're like other women. The only way? There's something different about you. I don't know exactly what it is. Perhaps your eyes. Or your skin. But for me, you're different from any woman I've ever known. I'm just an ordinary girl. I adore luxury. I'm terribly lazy. And I like to amuse myself doing crazy things. Oh? What kind of things? Well, I just turned 23 and I've had several lovers. How many lovers have you had? Oh, I never counted them. Not many. Why aren't you happily married? Every man needs women for different reasons. Apart from love. Apart from love, why do you need them? Perhaps to find out something about myself. You know, I could help you find out about yourself. I wouldn't want to, uh, to use you in that way. I don't want to harm you. I know how to take care of myself. Do you live here? Yes, I do, alone. Well, good night, Helen. 
Do you mind if I ask you another question? No. Why haven't you kissed me yet? I'm not a ghost, my dear. I took the first plane back. I wanted to surprise you, and apparently I did. Where have you been? With some woman? <laughs> what were the two of you doing? Did you tell her how much you loved your mother? Mildred. Did you think I was going to leave you here alone? I sent Gladys a telegram saying I wasn't coming. I don't intend to leave you here alone for a week, do you hear? Don't even bother dreaming about it. Are you listening? Not a week, not a day, not even a minute. I'll always be here at your side, whether you like it or not. Always, always. got married, to be exact. We laughed together, made plans, had dreams. But you were never my husband. I know, but I wanted you so much. John. Then something happened. Right on a wedding night, I... I heard those footsteps. What footsteps? Mildred, 
I know I should have done something that night. But I was afraid. John, John, don't leave me like this. Have pity, die. Don't leave me. I'll be back in a minute. I promise. the solution is that I hated these last years with you and now finally it'll be all over but why why I think it's necessary it's inescapable I'm sure of it <gasps> <gasps> Where is she? Where is who? Alice Norton. I know she's in this house with you. Alice Norton is Mr. Kane's fiance. We heard a woman screaming. Screaming? Yes, we certainly heard. Oh, Inspector, you're allowing yourself to be influenced by a very impressionable young man. I'm surprised at you. It's not worthy of you, you know. No. No, don't touch me. Leave me alone! Were these the screams you heard? Very interesting. You like horror films, do you? I don't find them very entertaining. I keep thinking that reality is more terrifying than fiction. Wouldn't you agree? Another strange disappearance of one of your models, Mr. Harrington, Alice Norton, who hasn't been seen in a week since she works at your fashion house and no one saw her leave. 
Well, I thought you might be able to help me. Logical? No. It's hard to believe she wouldn't leave word with someone. Alice Norton and Jimmy Kane were to be married before long. Did you know that, Mr. Harrington? Uh, your visits are becoming too frequent, Inspector. They begin to annoy me. If you wish to continue this investigation, you'll have to make a formal charge against Mr. Harrington. So you don't know anything about her? No. I must apologize. It was a misunderstanding. Isn't that so, Mr. Kane? I think so. Hmm. Good night, Mr. Harrington. Good night. Oh, uh, it's very cold tonight, isn't it? Yes, quite cold. Mm. It's curious. You seem to be sweating. Mm. Very curious. What are you filling that cup for? Your wife asked for it. Mm. 
for number 12. Almost ready? Mm, in a minute. The white boots go with model 24. Yes, ma'am, I'm on my way. Mrs. Harrington, it's a pleasure to see you here. We thought you were away. Oh, by the way, John, what's that now we're going to use for model 25? What would you suggest, Mrs. Harrington? Uh, she's gone. Well, and shall we leave it the way it was? Uh, John, is it all right? Yes, fine. Listen, I'd like a color shot of this for the cover, Jacques. How's it going, Marie? Fine. Good. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Do you like that negligee? Uh-huh. It looks fine. Thanks. I'm happy. Model 11, subtle breeze, fashioned from a base of Swiss organ and appliqued with a spattering of flowers in free form. The flowered cap has a short veil, also in organza. The shoes are of delustered satin with Italian... Good morning, Betsy. Good morning, Lady Worcester. Model 12, Summer Moon. This is an Empire-style gown in fur with a cloak of lace. The shoes and stockings are of silver lame. Model 15, Awakening. This one is a nightgown of fine Dutch tulle, worn with slippers trimmed in swan down. Excuse me for a moment, won't you, ladies? Model 18, Orange Flowers. An enchanting ensemble in natural silk and delustered satin. The shoes are buckled. Inspector Russ. And what more? And what brings you here? It used to be when marriage for a woman was a simple problem of finding success or failure. Now she also has a simple problem of keeping alive. But which of those wedding gowns will the next victim be wearing? This one? That one? I wouldn't know. I made a routine call to the television station. I asked them to show me the film that was playing that night that we showed up and invited at your house. Strange. But nobody screamed before that scene we saw when you turned on the TV in front of us. Interesting, huh? Yeah, it's very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Oh, would you like me to tell you my plan for trapping the murderer? If you want to. Just patience. Only that. Just patience. Right now all I can do is wait. But it won't be very long until I'll be able to burst this bubble. Good day. Good day, Inspector. A short dress whose top is completely ruffled in handmade lace. The ruffles are repeated at the hem. A bore, wouldn't you say? My mother still thinks these things are important. And you don't think so? If only girls who deserve these dresses wore them, you would go bankrupt. Do you deserve one? Certainly not. You don't really think that I'm a lily-white virgin, do you? I'm my own boss. I hope you're going to be present at my wedding. You are? Sure, why not? He must like you, and that's something. He's very nervous. And very lucky. <laughs> What's wrong with your mother? She's talking to herself. Are you blind? She's with your wife. Mildred? Mildred? 
Eldred, where have you gone to? Never leave you, John. Never. Everyone will see me except you. By your side as always. Always, John. Always by your side. They'll say we're a perfect couple.
I hope that finally you're happy. You wanted to be with me, dear. Always. You said so yourself. Like something, dear? A whiskey for you, monsieur, and a sherry for madame. to us, Mildred. Would you like to come home with me? You have company. She won't disturb us. We'll go to my house. The three of us. My wife will see something she won't ever forget. Not even in hell. You rotten pervert! Who do you think you are? Throw him out of here! He's not in the building.
I was in the fitting room and I saw you come up here. May I come in? Yes, of course. Come closer, Helen. <laughs> when I was a little boy, this was my room. We've all had a room like this. And then it gets lost, this room of memories. But you've kept yours beautifully. Yes, the memories do float about somewhere, vaguely. You managed to preserve them very well. Get out of here, Helen. John, are you ill? I'm coming to the end of a long road. Our minds get so tired of suffering. Of suffering so. I've got to find out. There's only a little way to go. Only one step more. And I'll have found out everything. Only one step more, the last, Helen.
I didn't expect you to be here, Harrington. What do you want, Inspector? The killer tried to get to Lady Worcester's daughter at her house tonight. You were at the reception, weren't you? Yes. How long were you there? Not long. Mr. Harrington and I have been here all evening. We decided to spend the night together. Any objections? Oh, no, of course not, Miss Wood. You won't be long, will you? You seem to be a very lucky man, Harrington. I must say, very lucky. If I were you, I wouldn't press my luck. Pardon this interruption. You are certainly very fortunate. I envy you. Um, I'd visit a doctor if I were you. You are sweating again in the cold air. And I can turn into a nuisance. Good evening. Helen, what are you doing here? Can't you guess? You don't mind my using your bath, do you? Or getting into your dressing gown? Why did you lie to help me? I wanted him to leave so that we could spend some time alone. You're not afraid to be alone with me? Me afraid? Not a chance. Go away. Please. Please go away. Do you mean it? Really? Yes. Something unforeseen has happened. Go. Go now. Before it's too late. I don't want to go. I want to stay. I want to be with you.
I never wanted to harm you, Helen. No, I didn't. But I must fit that last piece into place. I must know who did it. courageous young lady. Helen was the pawn you introduced into the game. Am I right, Inspector? It could have been so nice. I think. Although I suppose it couldn't be. Let's go, Inspector. Good evening, John. At first, you couldn't see me. And now nobody will see me except you. And we'll always be together. At first, in the insane asylum, and then in hell for eternity. No. Go away. I don't want you with me. No. No. Oh, let me Take go! Her. No, make her go! Make her go! No. Back here! I killed her once! I don't want to have to kill her again! No! Oh, no. 